Hi everybody, this time we're going to talk a little bit about radioactivity. We've been talking about isotopes and the fact that some isotopes of elements are radioactive. So what actually is radioactivity? How does it occur? And what are the hazards and the good parts about it? Some nuclei are unstable of some atoms. So what does that mean and where does that come from? Well, some nuclei of atoms have just basically too much stuff inside that nuclei to allow them to hang together and hold together well. Inside the nucleus of atoms, there are two opposing forces. You are a smart person and you know that like charges repel. So if you have uh, two negative charges, like you have a negatively charged um, balloon and you rub it on your hair and your hair gets negatively charged and you bring the balloon next to it, the two things are going to repel. So like charges repel. hundred or so years ago when physicists first started looking inside the atom and they realized that the nucleus of the atom was full of all of these lovely little protons and all of them were very tightly packed and they were all positively charged, they started scratching their head and going, huh, how come the nucleus of an atom holds together? Because there should be a repulsive force trying to pull that atom apart. And the force pulling that atom apart is an electrical force. Well, they discovered an additional force, and the additional force that only occurs inside of atoms is called the strong nuclear force. You and I in our everyday life don't experience it. It is has a very short range. It only occurs inside those nuclei, but that strong nuclear force is what actually holds the nucleus together. Now, if you have a stable atom, the strong nuclear force is strong enough that it overcomes the repulsive force of electricity and the strong nuclear force will hold the nucleus together. But some nuclei are unstable and they're so unstable so that the electrical force of repulsion is trying to blow apart the nucleus and the strong electrical force, oops, I got my arrows pointed the wrong way, the strong force is just not there strong enough to actually be able to hold it together forever and ever and ever. So if that's the situation, something's got to give. And what an atom does in an attempt to become more stable is it actually ejects pieces of the nucleus. The pieces of the nucleus that are ejected in that attempt are referred to as radioactivity. The kinds of things that are ejected out of the nucleus, there are three that are very, very common, and they are given the first three letters of the Greek alphabet as their names, alpha, beta, and gamma. When they were first discovered, they didn't know what they were, so they just named them A, B, and C, but they were fancy, so they put Greek names on them instead of plain old English. An alpha particle is actually a helium nucleus, but it is coming out of the nucleus of an atom. Two protons, two neutrons. A beta particle is actually an electron that comes out of the nucleus. We haven't talked about this before, but a neutron is inherently unstable. A neutron over time, given enough time, will decompose into a proton and an electron. That's how a neutron will achieves its zero charge, is it's got one positive, one negative, and that ends up to zero. So sometimes a neutron decomposes, spits out an electron, and the proton stays inside that nucleus. With an alpha, with a beta, sometimes there is a little burp of high energy light invisible to the human eye above the wavelengths that we can see, and that is a gamma particle. So those are those three common types of radioactivity that atoms can emit. All atoms, all elements have radioactive forms, radioactive isotopes. And on the periodic table we've been referring to throughout the course, there is a chart of some of these common radioactive isotopes. I want you to understand that radiation is 100% natural. It has been around since the beginning of time. It has 
been around, it will be around till the end of time. This is not something that mankind produced like an evil snidely whiplash um, by scientists messing with the inside of atoms. It was just discovered in the late I, I said late 1800s, not late 1900s, late 1800s, early 1900s, that scientists really, a little over 120, 130 years ago, really started understanding this stuff even existed. Why did we not know this existed? Well, you can't detect it with your senses. You cannot see it. You cannot smell it with your nose. You just cannot detect radiation, uh, you have to have special sensors. Things like Geiger counters, dosimeters in order to detect radiation. It's been around forever, uh, but it's you got to just have special gizmos to know that it is there. Now, radiation can be called ionizing radiation. We haven't talked a lot about ions yet, but an ion is a charged atom. Uh, if you have a neutral atom, so that the number of electrons matches the number of protons in between, but if one of those electrons is removed, you now have an ion. And an ion is something that is chemically very, very reactive. It wants to react with something else really, really badly. And if a piece of radiation can penetrate matter, meaning it goes through your body, goes through your house, goes through your bowl of cornflakes in the morning, um, and it can knock an electron off of an atom, creating an ion, it has created something that is so chemically reactive that if it happens to be part of a living organism, it can be dangerous. Now, it can be dangerous because the ion is going to randomly bond. Now, if it randomly bonds most of the time, it is going to cause no damage. Um, it is going to be harmless. It's sort of like you get a paper cut, um, and if you get a paper cut, you know, you heal up and it's not a big deal. But if the ion bonds with a piece of DNA that happens to be a future offspring in a, a sperm or an egg that might create one of your children, well, that can cause a mutation. Or maybe it's a piece of DNA that's going to cause one of the cells in your body to reproduce. Then that could possibly cause a cancer. So this ionizing radiation can be dangerous and it can harm people and life of any sort. High dosages of this can be dangerous. And we're talking very, very high dosages. So it is important that we understand what it is and how to protect ourselves. There's lots of different types of ionizing radiation. Some of them we enjoy all the time. Um, ultraviolet light, the sort of light that gives us a sun tan, is a form of ionizing radiation. The x-rays that we get when we go to the dentist and the doctor, those are ionizing radiation. Gamma rays, which are a commonly used in cancer treatments, those are ionizing radiation. And then the alpha and beta particles that are emitted from the nuclei of atoms can also be used in cancer treatments and things like that. But they are very common in natural sources, rocks, air, etc. Mankind does produce some radioactive background radiation, but truthfully, between medical exposure and natural exposure, that's where you and I are going to get most of our exposure. So how do we protect ourselves? Well, we protect ourselves by limiting our exposure. If you are going to go hang out in the sun, and I'm a sun baby, I love hanging out in the sun, it is wise to protect yourself with sunscreen and hats and things like that to just keep the ionizing radiation and the ultraviolet form from causing mutations in your skin cells. If you go to the dentist, I hope you go to the dentist, but when you go to the dentist, they typically are going to put some sort of a lead blanket on you. Um, not that the x-rays that are very, very pinpointed, because these things are 
like laser beams. They go in a nice straight line. But if there is any splatter, if there is any rays that are going to go in weird, crazy directions, they don't want them going towards your reproductive cells. So they just put a lead blanket on you to protect you and to protect the unborn. Um, you'll notice that people who work in the industry, they're going to go further away because they want to protect themselves. You might only get dental x-rays every six months, every year perhaps, but the people in that office, they're going to get them multiple times per day. They're going to have x-rays floating around. People who work in the medical industry, they may actually wear a dosimeter. A dosimeter will record their dosage and by law, uh, they have to be protected so they do not get overexposed. You may have had x-rays prior to a surgery or something like that and responsible medical professionals are going to they're going to look at those x-rays and say, well, maybe we don't need another set because every time you're exposed to that radiation, it could possibly lead to mutations. Um, the medical world is pretty good about making sure that you do not get overexposed. Now, the radioactive isotopes have a lot of positive uses. They kill fast-growing cells. They're really good at killing cells that are reproducing quickly. Now, what that means is they're great at treating tumors. Um, that is why it is commonly used as a cancer treatment. Um, the gamma radiation specifically, remember I said it's like a laser beam and it can be pointed that specifically. If somebody has a tumor, instead of aiming it at the entire patient, they can aim them right at the tumor. So it's really precise. It's like using a, a laser knife. It's awesome stuff. The other thing that happens, you'll notice a lot of folks going through these cancer treatments with radiation will lose their hair. Why? Well, hair is one of the fastest growing sets of cells on your body. And the lead blankie, as I mentioned, it's fast growing cells include reproductive cells. So we're going to try and protect the unborn in that way. Another use of radioactive isotopes is to help sterilize medical supplies. Uh, medical supplies are produced in non-sterile regular factories, but when the surgeon and staff opens these in the surgical suite, we want all of those supplies to be perfectly sterile so you don't get germs um, exposed to the patient. So how do they do that? After they're after they have been packaged, they are exposed to a lot of radiation, usually gamma radiation, and they kill the bacteria, the viruses inside the packaging because the gamma radiation can actually penetrate the packaging, kill those fast growing little microorganisms. Often if you look at big cases of the medical supplies, they'll have a sticker on them that says not irradiated, radiated, and the sticker will change color after the radiation process. Food, much of the food that you and I eat is actually sterilized with gamma radiation. How do you think we get strawberries in the middle of the winter time that are shipped all the way from South America? Um, if you keep them at a cold temperature, they're not going to survive the trip on a ship from half a, half a world away. So what they do is they expose them to gamma radiation. Again, they're going to get rid of the bacteria and the mold and the fungus that are going to be on there. Everything from spices to meat to poultry are sterilized in this way, and it has really greatly enhanced the quality and the diversity of food that we can get across the world. Why is this not commonly known? Because people are kind of stupid, and we get frightened of the word radiation, but it really has saved a lot of lives by increasing the quality and the safety of food. Uses of radioactive isotopes also include tracers um, in the medical world. They can inject a radioactive isotope, follow that through the body as doctors and physicians want to look at how, how a particular chemical goes through the body. Um, they're usually going to pick something with a short half-life, meaning that within a few hours or 24 hours for sure, um, it is no longer radioactive. They do this with everything from water systems to bowels to parts of the brain. So tracers are a commonly used thing. 
And last but not least, I want you to understand that being exposed to radiation does not mean that you can re-emit radiation. If you've been exposed to gamma rays, that doesn't mean that you can emit gamma rays. Um, it's kind of like being, if you're exposed to the light, sunshine does not come off of you. All right. Have a fabulous day. We'll talk later. Bye-bye.